Hello and welcome back to another episode of Technical Tuesdays. This is the series where we explore how the different parameters of injection molding can affect the final part or product. In this episode we're going back to basics to explore the importance of mold tools, how they shape the parts and the difference between the different types of tools. First things first, we're going to have to explore where the mold tool fits into the process. So we know that the raw plastic material is stored in the hopper above the barrel. The screw within the barrel turns which pushes the raw polymer towards the front of the barrel where it's heated into a liquid. As the liquid polymer collects in the holding chamber in front of the screw, back pressure is applied to ensure the correct dosage of the part and stops the screw from turning. When there is sufficient material in the holding chamber, the mould tool will then clamp shut so the liquid polymer can be injected using clamping pressure to ensure a tight seal. Now that we know where in the process the mould tool is used, how do they work? Put very simply, mould tools work by forming a cavity when the two halves clamp shut in the desired shape of the product. However, there's a lot more to tools than just the shape cavity. There are several main components of mould tools that allow them to work as intended and keep them running for the longest time possible. These include the moving half and fixed half back plates. These allow the mould tool to be attached to the machine. The ejector plate. This allows the ejector pins to move forward and eject the part when the mould tool opens. The ejector pins. These allow for the part to be ejected from the tool when it opens. As the tool opens, the ejector plate pushes the pins forward, which are located in key sections so they do not damage the part. The guide pillars. These are the pins present on the moving half of the tool that slide into the bushes on the fixed half. These ensure the two halves of the tool are aligned so that the part can form correctly. The mould core and cavity. The mould core and cavity are the shaped sections between both halves of the mould tool. They give the plastic product its final shape. The molten polymer is injected into the core and cavity and then it cools until it holds its shape. The design of the core and cavity is essential to the correct formation of the product. The cooling circuit. As covered in a previous video, the cooling circuit allows for heated or cooled water to run through key sections of the mould to evenly cool the part. The runners. Runners allow for the molten polymer to reach the core and cavity of the mould tool. These can be hot or cold depending on the setup of the tool. Hot runners are more expensive but offer more leeway with gate positions when designing the tool. Gates. Gates are the point between the runner and the core and cavity. Gates are often designed to be narrower than the runner. This is because the plastic will be thinner here when it sets so that it forms a weak point making it easier to separate from the runner. Last but not least is the locating ring. This is located on the fixed half of the tool where the barrel meets the back of the tool. It ensures correct alignment between the tool and the machine. Now that we know the key components of a mould tool, we can explore the different types of tools. The most basic form of an injection mould is a single impression tool. As the name suggests, the tools produce one part each cycle. The advantage of these tools are they are easier to design, they contain the least number of moving parts making them easier to maintain, and they are the cheapest tools to produce. Next we have multi-impression tools. These are extremely similar to single impression tools, however, instead of just producing one part within each cycle, they can produce anything from two to thousands of parts every cycle. Similar to single impression tools are overmold tools. These are tools that are designed to fit a prefabricated part molded in another tool so that another material can be molded over the existing part. These tools are usually priced similarly to single impression tools. However, because multiple tools are needed to create the finished article, they are often seen as the most expensive molding method. Similar to overmold tools are insert molds. There isn't much difference between the two designs. The main difference being that insert moulds are designed to fit a part that isn't plastic, like a circuit board or a metal insert. These types of tools don't require the purchase of multiple tools and therefore cost less than the overmold counterparts. Next we have family impression tools. These are very similar to multi-impression tools as they're designed to make multiple parts during the same cycle phase. The main difference being that instead of producing several of the same part, family tools create different parts. 
These are a great option if the different parts all require the same material and are of a similar size. The most complicated tool design is a two-shot mould tool. These tools are designed to inject two different materials during the same cycle phase. Two-shot tools do this by adding a rotating element to the tool design with two different cores and cavities. One side will take the substrate, which is the first material to be injected, whilst the other side is designed to inject over the top of the substrate. They are similar to overmold tools in principle, but are often much more cost effective as only one tool is required instead of two. Okay, so that wraps it up for our episode on mold tools. This is a topic we'll explore in more detail in a future episode. As always, we hope you've learned something. If you have any questions, comments or suggestions, let us know down below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you all in the next video.